阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Good evening or good day and night to everyone across the world.、Uh, thank you for attending、uh, yet another session in our treatise on response and retributions. Um, today we are moving on to a new section. Before that, let me show you. Let me share the screen. I have changed the wallpaper、uh, just to you know symbolize we are moving on to another part、uh, of the treatise. So back to this. Every time we go into a new section, we need to tell ourselves why are we doing this? Why are we here listening to this? If anything, why am I talking about this? All、right. Doesn't matter how many people hearing. It matters to me who say it. I need to be clear what I'm talking about. This is all about karma. To boil it all into one sentence, karma. In English, reaction. So basically, cause and effect. You know, what goes around comes around. You reap what you sow. From there, we expand. How does it work? You know, first we need to understand the concept. Of karma, you know, which we explained already by these descriptors, and how does it work? All right, and what's the effect? If we want to, how does it work? What's the effect? What can we see in our daily life you know, about the karma, so that it does not stay in the abstract cloud, but in our daily actions, thoughts, deeds, and I'm、uh, sorry, actions is deeds, actions, thoughts, and speech. These are three. Main creating,、uh, main how to say, producer of karma. Right, understanding this, then we can start reflect internally, which is what part of the meditation course as well. Like chanting Amitabha, in our case as a pure and practitioner, we we recite his name. If you read the sutra,、um, and understand the character of Amitabha, and you recite his name as you go, your thought karma, the thing you. The, whatever you're thinking, basically, the speech karma, whatever you're saying, the deed karma, the action, whatever you're doing, saying, thinking, we focus and channel into one spot. No matter what happened, nothing can move you, as long as you fixated on that one spot. That's how meditation start. Can be breathing. You can focus on breathing, focus on the out in and out in and out. This is breathing meditation. What Buddha thought in the beginning, and very commonplace、uh, technique. All these things work by focusing on one spot, so that your karma is purified, so that you stop creating, whether it be good or bad karma, or good or bad、um, wheels of motion. All right. So boil it down to the simpler terms: what you say, what you do, what you think, has effects. That's the whole point of this book: what you think, what you say, what you do, right? And we are here to explore how good can it go or how bad can it goes, and then we list out how many, like, what are the goods, what are the unwholesome or the bads, right? So, what are the good? Is those karma? Which is the speech, thought, action that creates good results, the desirable results,、um, in the form of you know,、uh, well respected, well loved,、um, get what you want. You know, you if you have a dream, you pursue it, you get it. Those things is a result of good karma. All right, or bad as in things go against your wishes, or、um, unfortunate things happen to people you love, or Uh, whoever you met is not the person you like the most, 
obviously these are the most shallow way to see, not shallow the begin the, the most easiest way to grasp with it but as you go deeper and deeper <clears throat> we must understand all right like dislike good bad right wrong um, anything any descriptors that we use is by itself illusory we there's nothing there but we make it there there is supposed to be one but we what we need to like but we just have to cover into half like last week or last last week be it youth group session or individual session circle there's no beginning there's no ending but we just have to put a point and say this is the beginning that is the ending all right every point can be beginning every point can be ending but we just have to do that we just have to say where's the start where's the end thinking in the straight arrow way of thinking but you know the more even the modern science they discover that it's not that straightforward you know and so without going too much in that side we can appreciate that this is not just saying this is just not not just a moral book not just saying that you know uh you know you good you get reward you bet you get punished those are those are easy way to understand it but as you appreciate it better in your life you realize that the way you see the world will change as well the way you perceive the world will change that's my goal at least for myself and i hope to share it my what i understand and learn uh from this uh, book not just this book actually from the whole series you know the real fun four lessons it's all about that changing destiny or even this you know it may seem simple but you know this way focus on you know the conduct of being a good person focus on your conduct to divert it to its good favorable outcomes so you want a good results good karma you need to create good karma right if you want a favorable result in your life you need to have good karma you need to create good karma so basically that's what this way is about if we look everything from the terms of cause and effect so this case is more on a cautionary tale or uh, just be just like a you know warning like this happens if you committed this um, negative karma in fact it actually leans more heavily on what is the bad karma right if you really want to know the real effect and if you're able to accept under uh, the reincarnations rebirth and you know understand that you know no we only we don't only have we don't not only have one life and when we die it does not end it's just another stage another cycle we need to continue then buddha's sutra has even deeper understanding and analysis on what is the extended result of your good or bad karma all right so we just need to be clear on that this is not just simply a a book like with commandments and tell you you know you should not do this if you do this you're going to get punished yes that is the way to start with and that's how we should you know beginning learn it's how we learn visually and mentally the, the image is quite, quite clear right like if we do do this we're going to suffer from the you know ret retributions you know in current life as a human and even worse in future life as a hell those are those are very real but we also need to appreciate it and you know develop sense of appreciation only then we can say oh it actually has a you know deeper meaning behind it uh, or it goes beyond this simplistic carve into bad good and bad all right which a lot of um, good traditions have but they did not go deep enough to you know a level where you know where we say good or bad or evil or right just is arising from our differentiation that depth is not there and buddhism offers that level it goes beyond that but we need to start first understanding what is what, what is wrong because these are very realistic and very real to us at, in our level if we do not change our actual deeds our karma basically the cause and effect the wheels of our karma if we don't go towards a better one then we will not yield the result we want all right no matter how you know how smart you are how well you grab the abstract side of it you need to you know uh, act on it and do do good you know and then only then you can talk about like zen like you know i do not have any differentiation or anything those are those are advanced level all right 
the way we see it, we need to go state, stage by stage. There are talents everywhere in every field, even Buddhism. There are talents in Buddhism. They can just go straight to the top without needing the stairs. But there's only one person so far. I can I heard, according to Master Qing Kong's teaching, there's only one person in at least in Chinese Buddhism history that we know can do that, which is the sixth patriarch of the Zen Buddhism, general the Zen Buddhism in China, Master Hui Neng. All right, all this Zen teaching you heard about, whatever in Japan, Sokoka Gai or Nichiren or anything, wait, Nichiren is pure land. Whatever you hear, it's all derived from him. Obviously, he continued the tradition back in, back from Bodhidharma, who came from India and spread in China. So basically, he's the only one so far in recorded annals of the Buddhist history that has this talent that just, just get there straight away. Rest of us, even though they are sharp, you know, sharp in terms of spiritually attuned to, to be enlightened, uh, they still need 10 years. 20 years, 3 years, they still need some sort of ladder. They may skip a lot faster than we are, but they still need ladders. So, of course we need ladders. We need to understand where we are. I'm not saying you, you should belittle yourself or anything, but we need to be humble if you want to learn this. This is not about um, this is not, this is about you know, emptying the cup so that you can receive even more. So, so without going to uh, to, to, to you know, straight too far from it. This is my introduction for this new part. So what we're talking about so far is section three. We have section three, right? Section one and two, we already mentioned. Section one is about what is this book about, you know? And it boils down to you reward your soul. Your action follows you like your shadow follows your body. Part two is talk about, I mean, section two is talking about good deeds. Good karma. So, what is the good karma, and what's the result of good karma? All right, it comes in the form of longevity. Without long life, whatever enjoyment you have will not will be meaningless because you don't have you don't live long enough to enjoy it. You can have three billion dollars today, but if you die tomorrow, these are useless unless you, of course, use it to help people. That's the whole point of t- telling you, like. Having this mindset is liberating, all right? It may be restrictive at first, trying to because it's trying to hold you back from your own autopilot, which most of the time is tuned towards negative side. Hence this world, hence all these negative stuff we see, we perceive, and bounce back to our sensories, and then you know it gets worse and worse and worse. It's like washing machine, but they're washing mud, and the mud. That does not have clean water in it. So it gets more muddy and muddy and muddy. It clocks in every single component of the washing machine. And this one, what we're trying to do here is trying to give in some pure water, clean water into this cycle so that the more you wash, the cleaner it gets. All right? Those are all already in action. Right now you're listening, you're thinking, you're talking. It's already in action. Don't think of, don't think of it as I will do it later. All right? Also, this is also an important mindset. Now I think of it, I'm already creating it. Right. Okay, so today, and then section three about what is the wrong, what is the bad karma, what is unwholesome deed, what is unskillful ways of living your life, unskillful ways of, you know, carry on about your life, which only create more misery. And this is a long, longest, this is the meat of the book. And Part one talks about treacherous deeds, basically a, a summary, a big overarching uh, introduction of what is crimes and offenses karmically. And then number two, part two talks about people in high position, they have this tendency, they are easily falling into this um, arrow zone in their deeds, speech, thoughts. Now part three, is about everyone, us, you and I, transgression that we commonly, you know, that we might commit easily. And the first part of it, which is today's, I would say, would take a whole day just to talk about this. This is important. First part is, what is the biggest 
transgression or biggest unwholesome karma we can do is to let the mud keep running in our washing machine instead of trying to add a little bit of water and wash it away. So we're allowing ourselves to collect the rubbish without, you know, cleaning it. So failing to make reasonable efforts to correct one's fault and to know good deeds but refuse to do them. Failing to make reasonable efforts to correct one's fault. All right. Who can say that? So anyone in this world, who can say they have no fault? They do no wrong at all in the very beginning. Like as in when they're born. No, no one. All right. You can say some very special individuals and stuff, but in terms of everyday people, no one. Everyone makes mistakes. All right. And even the sages who came out in our world, even Buddha himself, who has no fault in the, his karma, all right, or even Jesus or any and Muhammad, those good people, some might disagree, it's fine, but they appear to have fault. Otherwise, if it's too squeaky clean, everyone's like, oh, how? Right? They might appear to you they have fault. So here lies the question, how do you define fault? And in Chinese, it's even better. Let's first half. Failing to make reasonable effort to correct one's fault. This one is just say, in English translation, they forgot that one part. Knowing one's fault in order to correct one's fault. It takes one to know, it takes one to know one, right? You need to know before you do it. That's how the normal procedure goes. You don't know what you don't know. Then how can you change? You don't know that you are actually recycling the rubbish in your heart. Instead of saying, you, you, you inv instead of inviting um, clean purity uh, or uh, you know, f uh, liberating thoughts, you trap yourself in this endless cycles of um, hatred, ignorance, greed, lust, or you know, Everything, everything that's negative. And you don't know it's negative. That's the worst part. Not the worst part. That's, that's the part where this talk is about. Or every single seminar or, you know, workshop is about. Especially those people who can articulate even better. Um, Master Ching Kong is doing that. That's, what, that's his job the whole life. That's all the venerable's job. All the reverend from every churches. All the Muhammad, uh, the imams. The, the imams from the, the mosque or the knowledgeable um, people in, in, in even in secular field they're trying to tell you you know do a have a cultivate good habit physically mentally uh, spiritually so everyone in every single level single layer in the society they're trying to do that in their field right? because it's important you need to know what goes wrong before you fix it Right. If you say there's nothing wrong, but we don't fix what is not broken. The thing is, we don't know it. it's broken. That's the thing. So back to this. So is important. How do you define a fault? And this can go really deep. But from the simplest level, what is harmful to you and others is fault. What is beneficial to yourself and others is good. Basically, and how do we define that? Because harmful if if we say harmful is like um in terms of uh hurting yourself physically or mentally or spiritually in terms of your cultivation uh maybe the deeds you did is unwholesome in buddhism we have five precepts maybe the speech you talk is hurting people or maybe even hurting yourself like it's not it's good to be critical but if you keep saying something that you know keep pressing yourself down keep suppressing yourself um, when you're supposed to be you know be, ha be free and liberating uh, because of this concept that you carry forward maybe from your peers from your parents or from the environment you're in and then you keep suppressing yourself uh, excessively in the in the in the way in the unwholesome and skillful way not not, not restrained but suppress in a way then it's not healthy as well, right? Because we all, you know, you you know yourself. And to not know yourself is a very sad thing. You get lost. 
and you just follow the outside sensory and you get pulled around. You don't know yourself. If you don't know yourself, you don't know what goes wrong with your action or what is right. right? So they can go both ways, overly narcissistic or overly depressive. It's not good. All right? It's always a balance. There's no whole point of Taoism having this yin yang. It's because it should be like that. It's how you function as a human. You need to know what goes wrong and what you do right. And you need to you need to enforce the right, what is really right, and then wrong. You need to you need to work on it. Give yourself a, a a timeline or something, a plan, and then actually commit to work on it. Find help, seek help, listen to commit courses, seminars, or find good friends that actually you know uh, know you, care about you, and then help you, or parents, or teachers, or associations. So, knowing wrong, but now moving to the next level, you already know this is not right, all right? Um, this is not healthy, but you're allowing it to happen. That's number one. Number one transgression for everyone, no matter where you are, who you are. Knowing this is not right, but you're allowing it to happen, all right? Let's not go too far from ourselves, our thought. All right, you know, judging people or being angry or, um, you know, being lust, lust on people or uh, being greedy, you know, something that you don't need but you just still want to pursue it or take more than you need or uh, take more than, you know, the allowance that you have beyond your needs, even ones, like excessive ones, excessive um, desires. This is a little bit too much. And if we allow it to fester or we just let it, you know, run amok without any reasonable efforts to try to rein it in or tone it down or, you know, hold it back a bit, you know, no effort at all, just at allowing it to run amok. Then in Chinese, we call kuang wang, kuang wang, right? Let it run amok, rampaging everywhere. First, your mental space, rampaging your mental space. Once your mental space rampage, your speech goes incoherent or you say something stupid or say something really hurtful without even processing it yourself. And then your action as well. You know, you might do something that is impulsive, overly impulsive and, and without any uh, care and consideration. Right? They are excessive. Those are all like excessive stuff. And, and, and Failing to make reasonable to cor correct it, to adjust it, is number one transgression. All right. Because um, this part, regard, uh, this part is related to the view that I mentioned last time when you know right and wrong is made mudder up, and things go even muddier with you know your action and deeds because of the wrong view or the uh, you know what is su supposed to be right it was wrong what is wrong was made right something like that I, uh, sorry it's very messy basically the view is not um, correct and hence the conduct is not correct the speech is not correct the thought is not correct and so the view needs to be adjusted first and how do we say it's right view wrong view first thing we need to understand Anything excessive is wrong in a way, and wrong in terms of unwholesome, right? As in, it's it's harmful to yourself and others in the interactions or in your your space, your personal space as well. All right, moderation is the key. All right, first with moderation, no matter what it is, everything in moderation will keep things in check, so you can see. You, you allow more space, you know, for every, you know, different, you allow space for development uh, of yourself. You say you might not understand it at the beginning, but if you can restrain yourself at the moment, give yourself a bit of space before you say a word or give yourself a bit of space before you go too deep in the thinking, then you understand that this is actually not necessary. There are steps, you know, you can meditate to observe it better. Don't react, just observe. Or you can take a step back, um, look at the 
bigger pictures, say, you know, this little encounters with this person is unpleasant, but you look at the bigger pictures and see where they come from, why do they do that? Allowing yourself that space is important. And that will correct your own course easily. Right? It's not as like, oh, I need to re it back all the time. It's very tiring, right? So that's why you need to have, you know, being skillful about it. I like how Buddhists describe it, skillfulness. Those are skills you can pick up and learn. This whole point of having teachers to teach you is because you, you need that in your life to deal with a lot of things. And, 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 and hence, yeah. Leo Fan is teaching us about uh, every time you have faults, put it in the put it in the red dot on the calendar. Today I have five dots, five faults. If you make good deeds, also record it so that you can understand where you're standing. It's like finance, like how business run, right? You want to see your profit and lost, and uh, what's what's a plus, what's a minus, and and you want to be as earnest as you are in recording it so that you actually know where you're going in your business. What is not right is that you knowing that you are falling behind in, in your in your revenue and things are going terrible, you can't pay wages and anything, but you just cover your head into the sand. If it's fine, it's fine, you know. Uh, make some magic on the paper and try to cover it up. Basically, the first part of this uh, clause is what, try, uh, this is what the first part of the clause is about. Covering your eyes and not seeing your fault, even though you know it's there. Um, don't do that. Uh, because your life will not get better. It will not get better. It will. You will still encounter the same people that cause you that misery because you have not changed the way you think, you act, hence you attract the same kind of person. You know, and 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 even worse than before. Say in relationships, you know, the way you think about relationship, the way you behave in that, uh, the way you perceive that, is also important. Like if you think about so say you really shape, you think about only yourself, not caring for the other person. How can you expect to have a, a partner who care about you? It's not transactional, but it's how it works. Karma. You know, you read what you sow. If you're all selfish and you only care about yourself and only think about what you feel and then treat other people like, say, your, 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 because they're attracted to your appearance, the only person who will come close to you even though you're obnoxious, all right, and is maybe blessed by your appearance. You know, maybe they were drawn to your appearance. That's it. You know, all look, no content. That's terrible. Right? You don't want to be that person and you don't want to attract the person who only look at the outside only. All right? So you need to have content. In Chinese, we call it nehan. How to have content? Cultivation. How to cultivate? No fault change it correct the course know what is good act decisively and do it regardless of what people say all right the reason i can say that because i also have to do a lot more homework on this part i allowed too many folks to go by and also allowed too many goods to pass by those things happens every split of a second and to cultivate the effort of fault change it good grab it and do it this is also a practice it's like muscle exercise your muscle you need to condition it you need to have that uh, reflex moment and at the beginning you need to be more conscious you need to think about techniques you need to whether you stand right or balance i'm using gym analogy because i just started going back into gym but same goes for cultivation. You need to be careful in the beginning what is right, what is wrong. You don't understand that, it's fine. Leave it aside first. You know you, this is a trusted source. Master Ching Kong's speech can't go wrong with that. If you don't understand, leave it be. All right? And then, you know, say my, my, my talk might, might help you a little bit or you don't quite agree with it. It's fine. Look at the other source material, trusted source. Even Dalai Lama is very good as well if you're not into the system we're in. But what, what we're trying to do here is trying to uh, give you a bit of a uh, course adjustment. Give you a pointer on how you adjust your course. Once you adjust your course, you know what you want and you understand that what you need to do to achieve it. Then you start doing it. Repeat, rehearse, repeat, rehearse until it becomes you. It becomes your nature. And, and, and it, it's very painful. 
it's very annoying. It's very tiring. It's very draining. But that's the process. It has to go through this. It's better to get things with a lot of sweat than just getting it falling in your hand without knowing the, 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 the pain behind it. It's, you, you have a different level of appreciation. Hence, different level of resistance towards temptation. If things just fall into your lap and easily, you might... Let's not go, go there. Basically, you know, we, we, we need to work on this, okay? And uh, there's no shortcuts. The only shortcut is just be earnest, be honest about yourself. If you, if you have nothing, it's nothing, all right? Remember, it's not all just good, bad. It's also neutral. Say you have a very uh, calm and neutral thought. Leave it be. It's fine. But most of the time, you know, things that, 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 that will change things is good and bad. And most of the time, we are either this or that. Um, only when you actually cultivate good to a level where you no longer attach to the good you did, you do it like a, like that's what I'm trying to say. You do it like a second nature by yourself. And then the bad, you don't even need to, when you look at it, you just automatically push it away. You don't even do it at all. It's just not your thing. All right. Then only then we can discuss about, you know, uh, the, 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 the cultivation level where the Buddha is or the Bodhisattva is where you you put your son put the son put the uh tell me time for more ways and chamber I mean or like you know you don't want to think good you don't want to think you don't need to think good or bad you just you know just be like that all right everyone's different uh, they're obviously they are already attained people acting they are not attained because they want to try to educate people who, who's on the on the ground level like us but um most of the earth, 80, 99%, 98%, we need to understand what is right, what is wrong, be diligent doing what is right, and then be diligent to change what is wrong. So we can go deeper than that. You know, what is beneficial to you is right, what uh, beneficial to you and others is right, what is harmful to yourself and others is wrong. So how do we say, uh, 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 how do we go deeper? Okay, so what is, what is, um, What is real? What is illusory? All right. Because just now we talk about, oh, this is right, that is wrong, and then um, you know what is beneficial, uh, what is not, what is harmful, beneficial, harmful, or um, the view is right, and then the view is wrong. So once we have that, and then we practice that, we can talk about what is real, what is illusory. Knowing what is real, what is illusory, will allow us to adjust our cost even faster. Uh, we can just, you know, drop all these stages and we actually move on to the level where we can actually change our surroundings, our nature. Uh, it's not supernatural, it is natural. Na nature is like this. It's just we lock ourselves in that little corner. Just like, you know, every point can be a beginning. We just have to point, pinpoint one, one point in the zero and force ourselves to start there. It doesn't have to be. You know, as long as you, 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 you pick, pick a point and go deep, you will reach the center, which is the enlightenment. Uh, sorry, I think I get too, too, too divert on that, so I, I best move on. Um, oh, I like what, how Master Shinko say this. So what is beneficial? He defines it as people who are beneficial is um, people who have good impression on you is beneficial. And what is bad, when people have bad impression, it's not beneficial. Mm. So leave it a thought, because if you have good, they have good impression on you, that means they will be we more willing to help you when you're actually trying to do stuff. Say in, in terms of your career, in terms of your life, or even if you want to, you know, do some good deeds, people who have a good impression or good, or good vibes with you, they were more willing to help. On the other hand, if you have a very bad, left a very bad impression on other people, no matter what you do, they will try and not, they will try to stop you, but they won't help you as well. Or some people might even, you know, try to obstruct you in the process. Um, this is important because uh, this helps us in our life to get, you know, 
you want a smooth sailing life and we need to leave a good impression how do you leave a good impression still go back to the karma that you did you know are you genuine are you sincere and then are you really kind all right lasting good impression i'm not talking about you like just acting it up and then people are like oh this is a good guy or something those things cannot cover for long one day it will leak real good impression like this person are really genuine real is you you being honest with the fault you trying to own up to whatever you're doing or if you're running a business you're being honest you don't take one more cent for other people all right uh if you being a, a, a teacher you do not leave anything ground uncovered you teach them as much as they can take uh, no matter what you do you do it the best all right uh, not just focusing on bottom lines, trying to earn more cash and stuff like that. Those things can, will come if you have good service, if you really care about people you serve, all right? If you really give them a, a reasonable effort uh, to deliver. Can be more complicated, but that's the bottom line, all right? Um, same goes for bad impression. Like, when, would you go to a shop where they just insult and they were uh, subpar services or subpar stuff we talk about everyday stuff that you can meet like would you go to a place where let's say go to a gym there's worse worse customer service or not well maintained or anything those things those things are everyday okay we go to a, a restaurant where they can just treat you ter terribly and give you a food that's subpar and charging you three times the price uh, than the average no right so that's what Master Ching was trying to say. That's very straightforward. What is good, what is bad. All right. There's no big philosophical thinking about it. All right. Obviously, you can say, oh, how I react to it and all that depends on your cultivation. That's your own cultivation. But when you deal with people, you need to know the line, where the line is. I'm, I keep saying that, oh, we just have to draw a line. Yes, in deeper level, in Chi in Chinese the the not Chinese in the in the Buddhist teaching they have two levels. Yiga si li, yiga si si, all right. If you go to the we call it abstract theoretical level, the deeper level, um, we can say there's no reality, right or wrong. Um, you know, the line is blurred and all that. But when you actually action it, put it into action and actually deal with stuff, you need to actually know what is right and wrong. You need to know what line to cross, what line not to cross. Very simple. You don't go into airport. You don't. You don't. You don't cross to other country without giving the airport uh, passport. You get arrested. You don't. If you're a male, I don't care what orientation is. You don't go to a female bathroom. That is wrong. Doesn't matter if you have already liberated from the concept of male and female, or your transgender, or your uh, uh, alignment is like that. All right. You can go to the unisex one. It's fine. But you don't go to walk, even if you still have the male look, you don't walk straight into the female bathroom. That's wrong. All right. Those things cannot be debated. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to say here. I hope it's clear. All right. It's, we are in a much more complicated world. All right. That means it requires much more specialization in every single part of it. If the direction of this moral teaching is to be. Um, latching or to be catching up with the perception of the modern world this is how we should use it's called wisdom and we need all oh, i need to learn more you know anyway okay let's not go too far sorry guys um so to no good deeds but refuse to do them yeah what is right you know what is good from the most basic level, deliver good services, do your good job. And I would say, you know, if you pay $10, deliver a $20 level of service. All right. You want to talk about plus and minus. If you got pay 1000 deliver 2000 level level of service. That's how you improve your life. That's how you level up. All right. Don't just because you pay terribly, you act terribly. You're only stuck there forever. All right. If you want to get more in your life, you need to give more. All right. That's the first level. And then you receive more, you can give more. Don't don't keep it to yourself. If you just keep it to yourself, I'm not talking about don't save. That's entire different thing. 
everyone needs to save no matter what you are you need to save for future spending that's that's a reasonable stuff you need to also save for your future expenditures if you're a lay person even a monk um even nowadays, they can't escape finance. Some some people have to deal with that, um, but most of the time, it's lay person who deal with that. It's fine. But back to the everyday people thing. Okay, let's not go too far. Basically, you need to save. Besides all that, if you can give, you give. Even you can't give that much, commit to give. All right. That's how you how you grow your wealth and how to grow your um grow your good affinity, good impression with other people. All right. Yes, it may sound transactional, it may sound like you were very intentional, but that's the first step. All right? There are level ups on this thing, just like when you play a game, there are level ups. So you can level up this as well. All right? From willingly to give. I also, speaking about this, I, I like to repent. There are like few people who, you know, homeless and they bring up the courage to say, please, you know, I really need some help to get the money. Let's not say whether they are real or not real, but the fact they have the courage to ask for that and they do it courteously, um, I haven't given them the money. So that's kind of like, oh, I learned this and I haven't do it. Um, so basically, just try and tell me that, you know, if your hand, if you have cash in your hand, just give it away. All right. Don't, unless you need it, it's fine, set aside. But if you have like spare cash, five dollars, ten dollars, even one cent, one coin, one dollar coin, two dollar coin. Practice giving it away. Um, the more you give, the better. The more natural you become. All right. Now that I know my own fault, if I can, I will give it more away, and and trying to learn about this. All right. This is a this is for yourself in the beginning. This is for yourself to open up. You know to learn how to communicate because when you give you also communicate with the people all right the way of giving is also important you don't just throw money in there and say pick it up that is a fault by itself that's a big no-no no matter how even they can be a cheater they can be you know lying doesn't matter you don't know all right but the way you give is so important you need to give them as thing like you give to your friend give to your parents even better give to buddha Say so if imagine if Buddha taking arms for you, which is trauma. No, right? You would be like, oh, like that. That level, all right? I once follows the the Thai tradition monk. Uh, I observed them, uh, and all the lay person they were new. I'm just I'm just talking about no good deeds and uh, how to do it right. All right, this is still part of the topic. So I follow. I once followed the monk of Thai 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 forest tradition. Basically the closer to the original uh, Buddhism, you know, the Buddhism in India. And they have the alms taking uh, ceremony. I, every lay person will always kneel down there respectfully giving it. If you want to look on the outside, people who have no idea about this, technically, they are begging. If you want to, you want to purely look at the action without knowing who they are, one person is begging, in, con, uh, conducting an act of begging, not begging, yeah, begging for alms. We, we call it qi shi. It is begging. No other way around it. In Chinese, in Buddhist, I think even in original Sanskrit, it's begging. All right? whole point of this enterprise is to break down your ego. All right? oh, so Buddha already, like number, number one on the day one when he's starting this uh, new teaching, all right? Uh, departing from the Vedic, the Indian Vedic culture, right? establishing his own teaching. He start with asking for alms. Obviously, there are a lot of this tradition in India, uh, in in the Hinduism as well. But Buddha also take this approach because this works in pushing your boundary. Who am I? My status, my money, my wealth, right? That, that means the first step of and gaining that full enlightenment, which means full, good, zero bad in your deed, 100% purifying it, is to let go of your possession, number one. And that's why we call it ascetism or monastics. But back to the actual point I'm trying to point out is respectfully giving money or respectfully giving food, whatever you have, is a cultivation in itself. It's something I haven't achieved. 
and I wanted to because these are these are the things that how to say no one's gonna like say oh you like pet you or anything you you just have to do it because first thing you know you know that you know push you know you know that the act of giving is the first step the six parameter first step is act of giving and then you know and then precepts you know number one is to give number two is to Number two is to stop, uh, make reasonable effort to not correct one's fault. Basically, precepts, precepts exist because people make errors in their action, their thought. There are five main precepts, um, which is killing. You know, obviously harm yourself, harm others, fault, and killing. Going deeper is hurting yourself, hurting others. Consider an act of killing. You want to go more, more nuanced, more deep. Verbally hurting, because killing is physically hurting, right? In the in the most literal way, you use your knife and you use your gun and end people's life. And then, or, or this is a number one precepts, number one fault, which is big no no. But the one that we commonly commit might not be killing, literally, might be verbally hurting people, or making people. Annoyed, right? Which is on our fault. Like we're actually annoying them, or actually irritating people. That's even lighter, but uh, in some sense, you know. So, 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 so the whole point of first karma is make no harm, harm, uh, do no harm. Trying to, you know, uh, let them be at ease around you. Trying to make people, um, not make people. Trying to give them a uh, easy. And pleasing and um, easing and uh, interaction with them. All right. Uh, and then number two is stealing. Stealing, obviously, you know, take what is not yours, deprive people of the possession of their hard earned money in cash or hard earned possession or even hard earned merits you want to expand. You know, steal people's merits. People work hard to create something original and very um, innovative, and then you steal their patents. And there are quite a few historical invention. They are actually not done by the the name person. It was only found out hundred years later, and everyone's like spitting at that name. One of the name apparently is Edison. I'm not sure if it's real or not. It's stolen from Tesla's work. So, no matter how well you hide it, your name will come out, either as a culprit or not, if you're stealing. So this is why you don't commit steal karma. Be honest. Be 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 honest. You know you can't get there. It's fine. Assist the people who can get there, and you're also part of the merit. That's how it should work. Okay, you help people who know things. You don't try to steal their work and put it as yours. You may get all the glory and fame right now when you're leaving, if you have big enough fortune. To carry on this, if you don't have enough, that's why I'm saying karma is important. If you don't have enough fortune to carry this, your name will come out while you're living. If you have big enough fortune, your name won't come out. You won't be exposed. But after you die, for a certain period of time, people will find out the truth. Eventually, it will not be covered forever. Nothing can be covered forever. All right, and not to mention the karmic result on yourself if you're committing this act of stealing. So, um, beyond that, what is stealing that common people do? You know, we might not steal people's possession or anything. We not not steal the name, good name or credits of other people's work. But we may unintentionally take things without our permit, without permission. You know, um, there are exceptions. People who clearly will allow you. Even then, you still have a good practice. No one will, no one will say no. All right. If you're being polite, even you, if you're a good friend, close friend, or even a husband and wife level of relationship, if you still practice a certain level of, um, how to say, consideration. Say, um, maybe not, not in a way so like a stranger, but in like, hey honey, can I have the, can I have your stuff? Hey honey, can I? Hey dear, can I have your stuff? Hey babe, can I have this? Like even with that level of you know um, interaction. 
you still ask for permission to get their stuff. All right, they will love you more, and you love them more if they do that. All right, going back to normal people interaction, even your best friend calls me, hey bro, can I have this stuff? And sure, 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 take it, take it. You know, this this interaction is warm, right? Then you know, obviously you can you know play around and joke with that, and as long as they can accept it, I'm not saying that this thing, like this interaction, should be shunned. And like sometimes I did that, but um, the point is, uh, you know, it's always good to be polite. It's always good to ask for their opinion, ask for their uh, consider from their side, uh, before you take their things. All right. Uh, or sometimes everyone has their own secret, or there's there's their own little private time. You need to respect it, and you need to ask. Hey, can I have this? Oh, can I have your stuff? Even simple stuff like pen or anything. Just like, hey, can I have your pen? No matter how close you are with them, practice this. Trust me, um, you will find it easier to borrow things as well. People are like hey, this guy will always ask for permission for things. He will def- he will always return things after that. He sometimes give even more than you return. Now, we definitely get strict yes to that. Maybe in future you want to borrow money. They will, the bank was like, ah, oh, it's fine. This guy's good. Let's give him uh, the one million loan. They can buy the house. Good record. So, what I'm trying to tell you is, what is right, what is wrong? In the most, Bahao San Jama, Li He Hai, just three guys, three 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 ground level. The ground level, the bottom line, you can see what is right and wrong is the benefit. What is is benefiting in long run, all right? And what is wrong is it's harmful in long run, all right? Not now, like sometimes you know you need to you need to like be be patient, all right? In long run, it actually helps you. Right? Because you are like that, you are genuine. You really respect people's opinion, respect people's possession. So that's why five precepts can be very colorful if you put it in the right way. If people put it, interpret it correctly, that's up to us. We need to present it properly. We can't just say, you know, back, uh, keep it very literal. It's it's obvious, and who wants to listen to literal? But you know, we we start from there, and then we're trying to make it to every day. Okay, number three. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Today is just enough to contain this sentence, the depth of it. All right. So what's number what's number three? Pusa Dao Ying, no sexual misconduct. I think this is even bigger than anything else, above anything else. All right. You can say I might be a, a you know like a religious. Right? Yes, I am. So we are. And the whole point of having this restriction in every single major religion, in Christianity, you know, no wedlock. You know, you need to. Um, wait for marriage before you actually commit the uh, sexual intercourse and all that. Or in even in Muslim uh, communities, they still have that, all right? May I can agree their opinions. I understand, but more or less they have this restriction on that because it prevents more heartbreaking or in a in way it prevents something that are regrettable, all right? Especially pregnancy. The third person is involved, which is your children. And it can be really painful if extramarital affair or you know, premarital affair happens. You know, you might not lock in with the person, and then you're not sure they are right or not. And then you you kind of you know allowing yourself to carry. It. It's very complicated. I am not wise enough, no experience enough, uh, to to give a very definitive uh, opinion. There's something I need to acknowledge. Um, there are certain circumstances where divorce may may be for the better, but most of the time it should be done properly, as in it should be done amicably while caring for the children, both sides, no matter the the ex-wife and the stepfather, they should also work together um, to care for the children as if it's their own. Then I can say this is a better ending. Some people just in comically speaking, they are yuan fen yi jing. You know, they are, they are, um, that's what I'm saying. If I'm going towards three lives, it's actually better understanding. They are, you know, they are, they are, how to say, they are yin yuan. Their um, marital affinity has ended. You know, some, some people just like, ah, like, you know, we can move on. And they have no strong commitments, or even if they have children, they have a very nice, amicable relationship, even though they sort of break up and divorce. That's fine. 
right? Do it maturely and really nicely. And that's fine in that situation, I would say in, in our modern context. But bottom line, those are not extramarital affairs. These wars are not, they, if they do it right, you know, they don't commit adultery outside their marriage. They just can't move on. Like, they're just like, yeah, man, I think we should call it, call it a quit. Then, fine. But this one is when you're inside a marriage and then you commit something out beyond that. And it's like a huge, it's like a, how do I say? It's actually a rave topic, uh, not rave topic, it's actually a hot topic. TikToks and all that, more uh, social media, you know, it becomes a, a good part of the joke in a sense, like, hey, you know, they always like, you know, prank on their boyfriend and girlfriend, because I watch a lot of this lately, but prank on their boyfriend and girlfriend and say, hey, I'm cheating. Or, you know, there's this, you know, your boyfriend's or girlfriend holding the phone and then the other side trying to grab the phone and see who they're texting. <sighs> Why do you think this happens? You know, where's the trust? There's no trust. And, and if you say, I can fully trust, people would be like, are you a fool? Uh, more or less, people would do that. It has to do, this is complicated, and I, it's no way, in no way I can say this is, I do a lot of disclaimer, because this is quite sensitive. And, but the bottom line is, um, once you're locked in with that person, you know, be fair, be, be honest. There's a bottom line about it, right? Marriage is something like, like you sign up a contract, 18 months, gym contract. This is applicable to myself. 18 months gym contract. What does it do? Like, do you mean that? Does it mean that every single week you'll be like very active and you'll be like doing the workout and all that you, to fulfill, to, to how to say, get your worth out of it? No. But a contract is a contract. You get signed in 18 months and you need to do your best to make the best out of it. So for your marriage, same thing. You sign a life contract, basically, with each other, all right? That's why they make it paper, official, ceremony, both side witnessing, you know, getting bigger and bigger. Your own parents, their parents, they are looking at, what's the whole point of this? People might say marriage, you know, is the graveyard of romance. To be honest, if you understand deeper level on the na nature of romance, if you just build your whole marriage or relationship on romance, good luck. It will not last. All right. It has to be based on something uh, more deeper connection, uh, and and it's like a teamwork. You know, if you want this partnership to last longer, you got to work on it. It's not something you just sit there and say, "Oh, yeah, I have a good relationship." Yes, it happens, and that's not because they don't do any work. They already done their work before they were born. All right, they have a deep connection. This is why it's important to have understanding of life beyond this life. All right makes things make sense. It just makes sense. Whether it's scientifically proven or not, technology is not up there yet. How can you say no? All right, if it's logically sound and robust, if it's actually even more robust than denying it. If you deny it, you might sound like a, like a ostrich head in the sand. But back to the point, you know, there are always exceptions. And the point of exception is people might already have a good relationship in their past life. They have a deep connection in their past life. Now they just... They just need to light link up and then they got, got on together very well, easily. But most of the time, you need to work on it. And I, I, I'm not married. I'm, I, don't have even, I don't even have a relationship. But what I can understand and observe from people who do, uh, my own parents in, involved, is they work on it. They don't just have a very nice and smooth sailing relationship. It's, um, realistically, no. You got to work on it. You got to have to like, just like you work in your work, uh, day work, or work on your hobby, or work on your passion project, or whatever, you got to put your heart into it. And they are the person's got to work in it as well. And with that consensus, extramarital affair is very unlikely, unless put in a very extreme circumstance. Even then, if, if this partnership really works very well, every, both sides really understand the boundaries, really um, want to make this relationship works, and able to understand their boundaries means that no matter how many flare temper was thrown out, they will not say that word. Or uh, 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 divorce or, or break up with you. They will, they will kind of compromise when it reaches that point. They were like, okay, I'll compromise this. That the other person understands it, kicks in and they also compromise this. And this, this is why it's so interesting. 
to be honest. If you're a psychologist, damn, I should do psychology. But anyway, the point is, you know, this pull and push and pull is common. Uh, and it's how every relationship works, um, even in a normal one, and a normal friend. Obviously, not as intense. But yeah. So why am I dragging all this from the word no extramarital affair or no sexual misconduct? Because the whole point of having sexual misconduct is to find trio on the other side. And the whole point to avoid the trio by stepping out of your bound, which means you sleep with other person outside your marriage, is to find the trio inside your boundary. Reinvent your relationship. Trying to find something interesting to do together. All right? And it can't work if both sides doesn't want to work. And the whole point of both sides doesn't want to work. Some, most of the time, is they have stuck in that perception of their other half. Like, this person is going to act like that forever. All right? So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put on autopilot when I'm dealing with this other half of me or my partner or my wife, my husband. All right? No matter what your orientation is. Relationship is like that. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Putting in a very modern way. <laughs> Autopilot, you're like, this guy is going to act like that. All right, so I'm just going to, you know, put up that wall, and react the same thing, repeat and repeat. Just like wash the first sentence I give today, washing machine, recycling the dark, the, the mud inside. And then you will never get clean unless you pour in the clean water, open up the wall and let the dirty water going out. It takes many cycles to get out of it. Same goes for relationship. You need to, you know, if, if you're in a long-term relationship, as in a proper marriage, long marriage, one side's got to be quiet when the other side jumping around. And when the other side jumping around, they got to learn to read the room and understand and, and re-communicate. You know, they can't just do it all the time. Unless the other side is really patient and really deep cultivation, they can just take it. They just jump around. And the other side, or more, more or less, you know, the other person will probably understand that they are wrong. Uh, when they overreact, they'll be like, yeah, I overreacted. And this um, partner of mine always being tolerant. Or my husband or wife always being tolerant. Uh, feel bad. So they're trying to make up for it. All right, I'm getting too deep into that. What I'm trying to say is, if you don't want to, your other half to seek through outside, you better seek through inside your relationship. Doesn't matter what within the boundaries. There are boundaries. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have bound. Everyone should have a boundary. This is how operationally we work. All right? What we talk about, all that high-level stuff without boundaries, there's no right or wrong, male or female or anything. Those things happen. Those are, those are the origin. Those are what it looks like in the foundation. But when you actually put it, crystallize into this, there are boundaries. And and operating it, you need to follow a certain rule, like rules of physics on that. Those things are not conflicting. I can't explain it better because I'm not there yet, but I hope this can offer some useful advice for whoever's watching or even myself, you know, how to deal with people. No matter it's a romantic relationship or just a normal working relationship or friendship or family. Same thing. Same thing. All right. But sexual misconduct directly towards husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend. All right, and why am I going to do it? Because this is a big topic. Eventually, in future, if I keep going to do this, I'm going to have a specific topic on this one to drill out every single modern issues, while also reflecting on my own past wrongdoings as well. All right, those things I I would need to admit if I want to if I want to come clean and purified and actually being honest and open up, let people also feel safe and come in and talk about this. Only when we have open communication and uh, while being respectful of people's feelings and opinions, um, then we can have a real progress, making a real progress with ourselves. Change. Right? We need each other, to be honest, no matter what happens. We need a community, we need the people to grow. You have to do your work yourself, but when you do a certain level of work, you got to have to come to the community and share it, and other people might give you a different insight. And then this is how you grow. That's why Master Ching Kong still have a Dao Chang. All right? No matter his, you know, his condition, you still have to sit there and talk about Jiang Jing. He still have to do something to communicate with people, even though he likes to be uh, silent and peace and quiet. He still 
you know, inviting a lot of guests over and talk with him and ask him questions. And he's he's doing it nonstop until he can't, physically can't, in the last few years. Right? He physically cannot. All right? On, that's only happening recently. So back to the point. Number three is sexual misconduct. All right? Um, either outside your marriage or before marriage. Before marriage is another topic, which I think is more important to say because this is about right and wrong. People say, why not? We, why can't we live together? No one's stopping you. This is a free will. All right? However, I still have to give the one piece about that because it's a duty as a... Uh, we hang in the name of Amitabha in there and Buddha in there and we need to be clear about this. All right? You may call me traditionalist and we call it you know, very traditional, old-fashioned. It's fine. It's, it's right. Old-fashioned. Sometimes old-fashioned is not always wrong. Okay, sometimes older things are good. The reason there are reason why people don't do that sexual intercourse before marriage because, all right, you don't know that person, they don't know this person, and then you just commit to it. My result is it feels cheap. It cheapens the whole thing. No one denies sexual intercourse is pleasurable. All right, let's talk about the others. Uh, like of course we can talk about uh, that. But if you do it, just to do it, just to have a thrill, it cheapens the whole thing. Everything is better when it has proper meaning in it. It becomes emotional, not just physical act. This act is also an emotional, physical, and spiritual as well. It can be that level, but emotion and physical. And this can only be done when both sides are agreeing and actually serious about it. I say, oh, I don't need marriage to do that. I can be serious about relationship. But, like, you don't know that person. You're just physically drawn to them. You have that kind of act. You did the deed. All right? It's a common nowadays. No one will bet an eye. But I still have to say it because it's, it's, not, it's my duty. All right? I've carried the name of Buddha. I need to carry out, or I, need to, I need to lay it out properly. And I hope Christian friend and Muslim friend might chip in if they have. This thing... Um, how to say, if you actually understand the steps of relationship, the chances are you would start with understanding. You need to, need to know each other and then you need to start to understand what they are, not just in the date and good, good looking, good makeup. You actually need to understand the people they are around their friends and stuff. And this happens when you deal with that person long enough or hang out with that person long enough. Naturally, they will show up more side of their own because they're more trusting of you and you understand that this can go beyond just friendship and boyfriend and girlfriend and then do it normally without needing to do that the, the deed and it's it's in contrary to what current society because we always talk about sexual liberation and and you know there's all that you can go with that this is a free country I'm in a free country you're in a free country most of you are in a free country I can't say no even when I say no, you won't, you won't stop, right? But what I can do is, I can tell you what is this, what this sentence is about. What is the benefit, what is the, the harm, cost, benefit analysis, okay? It's more beneficial to hold it back, to wait. Good things wait, right? Good things last longer, right? And if you want, want it to last longer, you need to think about, do I just do this for the sake of it? I really care about that person. I really want to have a good life with that person. I'm going to wait. I'm going to be patient. And I'm not even going to think about it. Because these things comes and goes. It's not easy, but it comes and goes. And this kind of thing is, how do I say, what is good? Is you get to know the other person deeper, beyond just sexual attraction. And that's where good marriages was found. You get to know, because right now there's no, very seldom, right? I still have friends who, parents still arrange marriage and they they kind of consent to it they were like yeah it's fine all right it's not like force but nowadays it's you have to go out and find it on your own it's not easy um you still need your best friend if you don't not comfortable with your parents you still your best friend to look at it and it also depends on your friend's value all right right or wrong the, the right view so in this case, if I want to make it more nuanced and more sophisticated, uh, a, a subtle on this one, is it's better to hold and wait and observe 
and then build your dynamics with the other half beyond all right beyond just sexual attraction good look and all that those things are obviously you will already know in the first hand you'll pick it in the first hand but you need to go beyond that you need to look deeper and then only then you can say okay this person I can deal with that person you know the bad and the good and then my bad or my good they can she also can deal with you and only then you can like okay let's work deeper on this get more closer more intimate and then I hope with marriage it will seal the deal properly all right and then unwrap the gift both sides I know the way I say it's crude and oh, it's not Buddhist or anything but the thing is that it's nothing wrong it's very it's very open about it Buddha can even talk about that properly um, in, in one of the sutra as well like you know we all need to co- carry ourselves properly and then there are time places to do things like that as a lay person of course monastic is entirely you don't want to do that that's why you are monastic if you're a lay person you can do that in the right time right place right level of relationship like you cannot do it in the wrong time wrong place I don't want to go too much and then wrong level of relationship that means it's prematurely right wrong place I'm not going to go too deep into it everyone knows wrong time all right when funeral is happening or you know the day that Buddha become enlightened if you're a Buddhist or Christmas you know if you're Christian or Muhammad um, whatever the sages holiday or the day to commemorate your parents passing those things is because you out of respect you don't do things this kind of thing in front of them so what I'm trying to say is like business right you have to sign up the contract you have the feasibility check because I'm working in business banking you have to sign up the contract before you sign the contract you need to check the other person do they have a ability to repay the debt if you want to loan money as a bank you need to understand that person's character the credit check credibility you know is this person able to repay is this too much for this person all right if this person has a worst case scenario can this person overtake it these are the front part the the, the cognitive the, the rational part of your brain thinking this is important because if this crash down you crash down all right this has to come first in anything even relationship that's why cultivation is important always have practice using this instead of fully in- this is good this is emotional in the middle but the back and the front is about survival cognitive number one you know right you don't jump off the cliff number two you don't touch the scorching fire number three if a greasy bear is running towards you you better run or in Australia if an emu is running towards you you better run all right this part is where all the beautiful art and music and you know that deep thing going on you know and the section is going to is mixing up these two okay see I even go to the brain 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 scope you for to, just to explain this this is very important this is the core of the five precept to be honest because this will decide your act and deeds and this will decide your life as well you know the lifestyle the kind of relationship and hence your own personal well-being and hence the well-being of your children and hence the well-being of the world because everyone has family and if you have the shitty family upbringing chances are they might also be led astray and all they might unleash it on their own partner or on their friends so back to the point it the summary of this talk is just like business you have to check every feasibility before you sign a contract and seal the deal and even then you still need to commit you need to be understanding the risk and that you need to work towards you know whatever business or anything when you lend the money you want to generate more money and all that in relationship same thing you don't go into relationship thinking oh yeah it's going to end up in divorce but you walk in there and thinking oh you might break yes there are risks you might break but you don't want to break it and how do you not break it uh, first thing don't jump in and, and and do it first everything has a cost all right I'm not talking about money no, this is not prostitution I'm talking about proper relationship all right no matter how close they are this thing comes does not come cheap does not come comically does not come out of nowhere thin air you know in Chinese they're saying to to have a same to have a same pillow with the other half of your life your soulmates it takes 500 years of cultivation together it's not cheap everything has a cost 
if you if you pre-wrap you if you unwrap it too quickly what you're going to do is you're going to get a discounted version all right you're going to give her a discounted version she's going to give you a discounted version he or she doesn't matter all right that's another topic <laughs> that's what i'm saying i can write like proper talk on this um because this this is important to in our modern mindset we still also need to cultivate five precepts that it there's no excuse oh it's old-fashioned doesn't matter as long as it brings benefit to you and your community it's a good talk no one wants a bad relationship no one wants a bad marriage everyone wants a good relationship everyone wants a good marriage and good marriage brings out good family upbringings most of the time loving children children who grown in a loving family all right are more likely to be more loving and caring and considerate that's how we save the world by not committing sexual misconduct i think that is more important than than the rest the, the, the rest is quite obvious this one all right so back to this point is what is reasonable effort to correct one's fault don't commit the five precepts uh, don't 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 um trespass the five precepts the value of tri- five precepts i mentioned three of them the last two is no um sadao ying no lying all right trustworthiness your word if you want your word weight like a goal then don't spur out crap out of your mouth and speak less that's that's old fashioned as well but that teaching is always good i always find it useful speak less so that you can speak less error when you speak when you open your mouth make sure it is of value to other person Make sure you add value to the conversation. Make sure you add value to their life. If it's too heavy, you can have a light joke. You can have a light social, which I still need to learn to lighten up things. This is also add value to their life to lighten up their life. Anything else you say it has to come out out of a kind, honest heart, uh, and and really want to help the other person. Uh, if a joke it cannot be too much on, at the expense of them. Yeah, some people say, ah, you're too conservative. You know, how do you do stand-up comedy and all that? The thing is, uh, there are different levels. Like, I like spicy. You like extra spicy. Some people can't take it too much. You don't know if they are extra spicy or not unless you're really close to them. If they can take it, still be careful, all right? I mean, it, 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 it's a sign of closer relationship, but still, you know, this is about no lying. Okay, I, I, I diverted too far because no lying can branch out into four. I think it's too much for this session. Um, yeah, let's talk about it next time. All right, no lying can branch into four, but the general word of it is just you know everything you say has to wait. If you want people to treat your word like gold, that means hence your word commands a presence, uh, not command, commands attention, right? commands respect. Then stop spilling out crap from your mouth. That's the only way. Make sure your word adds value to their life to the team to the conversation depending on circumstances you're in even in relationship adds to the relationship all right it doesn't have to be all nice going even when you scold you scold with such a rationality that person is really do something wrong and they can take the scolding because they simply do not know then you scold them out of your real caring part of heart the loving heart not the hatred just to correct their course they will get it all right so no matter what form your speech is it has to wait like a goal and to train that you need to not lying number one because lying is spilling up empty stuff that means it has no weight everyone's like this guy is crapping chirping like a crow i don't need to listen to this that's why you know this expects everything first thing benefiting you all right and then other people all right only then you can benefit other people The last one is no intoxicants. People get drunk, and sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, I get really drunk sometimes, and I also, you know, lost consciousness once. But some people, when they get drunk, they really got aggressive or animated, which can be interpreted as aggressive if they're not careful. So basically, what I'm trying to say, no intoxicant means you avoid things that lose your mind. It's good to have fun, yeah, but always keep it in control. So that you don't step out of the boundary and commit the first four offenses, undoing everything, like 
this last piece is only to protect you from committing the actual first actual first four, which is the actual commit offense, or uh, actual how to say, cause of bad karma. All right. I hope it is of value in this session. I think I go really uh, far on that. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, it's a good talk. I think uh, I'll continue next week. I'll repeat again next week, and then following I'll deepen it. Actually, uh, based on Master Ching Kong's speech, and expand it to our modern time. Okay, so to wrap up, we need to know what is right and wrong. We need to understand that if it's something wrong, we need to ch change it. We need to make an effort. Why we can't do that? That includes myself. Okay, is because we are not putting these consequences or the benefits of correcting it in our in front of our head. Um, we my blood, we are how to say drawn by the short term incentive, short term gratification, short term pleasure, too easily that we forgot. You know, if we hold back a bit, you know, um, uh, do it in moderation, we can actually get a longer enjoyment out of it. Right. So it goes for uh, good deeds. If we do it earnestly. It may be awkward. May, people may give you command. You may think people looking at you weirdly, and you feel embarrassed. But the more you do it, the more natural you are. The more open your heart is towards helping people. Um, that's not to say you be a floor mat to people, but you know the boundaries and all that. But you also want to help them, you know, while respecting while uh, respecting others' boundary while others respecting your boundary. To start with, okay, we're talking about something we can do every day. Giving out your five dollars, one dollar, two dollar, any passerby who asking for money or sitting there in the cup waiting for money, just do it. One dollar, two dollar, if you're comfortable, and then push a little bit. Five dollar, oh, that's a bit too much. Or ten dollar, ooh, 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 twenty dollar. Do it within your means, but also push it a little bit on the upper limit of your means. Years to get out of this reluctance of giving money away because money is important. We all understand that. It took him ten years. What now? Ten years to, uh, give this strong, or this, 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 more willing to give that, 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 Right, he's a top one of the top performer in spiritual cultivation, forefront, looking beyond a four or five generations in his thinking. His speech will direct a lot of people in future. That's something I will, am very confident about. It also is a blueprint for me as well, Not because he's he's a visionary, and he used it in the Buddhist way, according to Buddha's teaching, which is even better. Multiplies. So this person even showing us. Takes ten years for him to get rid of that reluctance. Don't feel bad if you feel that, but commit to it anyway. It's like oh, ugh, oh, very weird. One dollar, all right. Two dollar, two dollar. The more you do it, the more natural you are. And then when you do it, you have to be respectful. You have to treat them like your friend, like your brother in distress or sister in distress. You're right. You care. You're fine. Like thinking about your own brother sitting there, your own sister sitting there. Of course, you will give as much as much as you can, all right. Do that, and your heart will open, and naturally, nothing goes unnoticed. Even though no humans will look looking at it, karma will come back. All right, that's how we should start understanding karma and acting in accordance to the teaching of karma. So I'll sum it up here. Uh, that's my summary. All right, do good, uh, correct the bad deeds, understand what is good and bad first, and act. As you understand it, don't need to wait until you become fully understand. That's, you can't fully understand until you act. Do as you go. Of course, sit down in this session and learn about you know this analysis that I'm trying to give, based on what I learned. All right, you can take it with a pinch of salt or anything. It's fine. I'm not, I'm not enlightened, but I want to be enlightened. I hope you are enlightened as well. Enlightened means that you get to do things freely, without crossing the boundary. That means you're free. You're liberating. You do whatever you want, but everything you do is always good. And 
no matter you think or not think, the good things will still fall on you. What kind of thing is that, Buddha? What kind of what kind of person is that, Buddha? That's what Buddhism is about. That is what Confucian is saying. His level. I can do whatever I want, but I will never cross the boundary, no matter what I do. I don't have to think this, think that. Like Auntie say, I ah, what's right? This sometimes I also, you know, ruminate. Ruminate means prapanchara, like drilling. Oh, should I this and that and that and this? All this one, all this thought coming out. You know, going beyond what is necessary to be thought on. Um, that means wandering thoughts, wandering away from the point, from having the right, uh, the thought that are necessary, the basic needs and all that. We will practice, get better, okay? Don't worry. All right, that's it. I think that's my style. We'll end this here. Um, with 10 times, I'm for, of course, always thankful to the Buddha. Uh, why people say, why not Shayamuni Buddha? Shayamuni Buddha told us to chant Amitabha Buddha. That's why we chant Amitabha Buddha. That's another project I need to have. A proper talk on the, let's not say out here. All right, on the Sutra in future. But for now, we stick to basic stuff. Do good, get good. Do bad, you will get bad. Simple. And why good? What is good? What is bad? Why is good? Why is bad? That's the three things we need to know. Do good, get good. Do bad, get bad. Why is uh, what is good? What is bad? And then why is good? Why is bad? Why is it good? Why is it bad? Right? We don't need to get too philosophical. We can add a little bit flavor up, but we always need to stick to these three basics. All right? All right. So, okay, okay, enough. Dylan. Nien for. All right. A mi to fo. 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 Let's dedicate our merits. May the merits and virtue accrue from this work. Adorn the Buddha's pure land. Repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings from the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire by their enlightened mind, bow to be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Namo Amitabha. Thank you, everyone. Hope you have a good, peaceful, and productive day or night. <laughs>